Now, to me, when you talk about business, just because things are a certain way at this particular moment in time, doesn't mean that they're always going to be that way. And you shouldn't be focusing on the here and now. If you're any business with worth any salt at all, you should be looking ahead. You should be looking towards the future. CEOs should be less daily operations chiefs and more chief vision officers looking at the next three to five years, da, 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 which sometimes will lead to some decisions that are questioned in the moment, like why would you do this here and now? And you know, sometimes you're measured based off of those decisions that set up the future, good, bad, or otherwise. Now, WWE is certainly part of this, where instead of what seems to be making these long-term vision moves, they're making a lot of here and now moves. And that to me is a concern and that is a problem, but nonetheless, that's what they're doing. And we've seen a number of roster releases here throughout 2021. And now I can balance that out between saying, hey, you're making record profits. Did you really need to do any budget cuts at this time? No, you really didn't. Probably poor form. Did you really need to release people from their contracts in the middle of a pandemic? No, probably not. Balancing that out with, you know, some of these people you probably aren't using them. They don't really provide much value. Why not save a little bit of money, refresh your roster a little bit? That is sensible business. That is also true. But as I look at some of the names that have been released throughout this year, some of them make total sense. Like you cut those people, you let them out of their contracts. You're not missing anything. They're easily replaceable. They're not talents, male or female, that you've invested a lot into. As a result, goodbye, good luck, you know, best to you. But then there are others you look at and you say, man, you've invested a lot in them and they've actually given you something. You put them in some pretty prominent and featured spots. Was cutting them for budget cuts reasons really the right call? Things like a poor, poor decision just to save a little bit of a buck. And even then you question whether or not you're really saving a buck. But as I look at all of these names and I look at all these people that have been released and future endeavored, it's all due to budget cuts and all this other bullshit. There is one name that stands out above the rest to me as to how in the hell does he still have a job? And who is that you might ask? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Of all of the people you talk about, that serve no purpose. Of all of the people that you talk about on the WWE roster that don't move the needle, that are a gigantic waste of time, that are boring as shit, that haven't evolved, haven't grown, haven't improved, any of that, it's freaking Dolph Ziggler. And yet somehow, some way, this a-hole, all of these years later, decade and a half plus going strong, he's got to be one of the longest consecutive tenured WWE superstars in the company right now. Isn't that nuts? How the hell is he still a thing in WWE? What the hell value does he provide? What the hell does he do to make the show better? What the hell does he do to make the roster better? The up and coming talent better? The answer is nothing, 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 nothing. You can have two opinions on this. One is the right one, which is nothing. The other one is the wrong one where you think he idiotically does something, but he ultimately does nothing. Because why? Because <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. And when you talk about budget cuts and you talk about money invested versus money return, I believe, keep me honest here, but he signed a relatively lucrative contract extension a couple of years ago that was paying him somewhere, wasn't it like 750000 a year to be a fucking jobber? Like if you want to talk about cutting budget and cutting expenses, cut him right there. He has not improved in years. His fucking show-off gimmick is stupid and dumb. The only time he cuts a promo that anybody pays any attention to is the same type of work shoot promo that any other jabroni on the fucking internet could cut twice as good as he can. All this stupid shit he does. Remember at one point in time he was rocking the twisties in his hair? Fucking middle school girl look is what the hell he's got. Like, what the hell is the appeal here? And why the hell does the company want to continue to basically flush money down the toilet to waste their television time on an overused, overexposed asshat like this. A decade and a half. You've seen all you're going to see. 
You want to talk about a guy that could use a change of scenery, it's him and not for his purpose because <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler is about how WWE needs a change of scenery from his sorry ass. I mean, he's so bad when you talk about Dolph Ziggler to the point that even people that really used to hardcore stand him and damn near put him in the same league, in the same category as a CM Punk and a Daniel Bryan that used to rage tweet about him, try to burn down the internet because they wanted Dolph Ziggler to be world champion. They wanted Dolph Ziggler to get a push and all of this crap. You know where those people are? Largely quiet now. Or in some cases, have joined me on the fuck Dolph Ziggler bandwagon because they realize if this guy don't give a shit, if he doesn't care, why should anybody else? And you would think at some point in time, WWE would take a look at a guy and say, damn, we're paying him almost seven figures a year to not give a fuck, not give a shit, not stand out in any way, shape, or form, not do anything different, interesting, and unique. Is there really anybody that's buying any Dolph Ziggler merchandise? I mean, really? Seriously? Is anybody sitting there and clicking on YouTube clips of him as a higher rate compared to others? I don't think so. Is he some significant ratings draw? <laughs> you know better than that. Is anybody really spending money for tickets because they said, Oh my God, Dolph fucking Ziggler is on the card tonight. I got to check him out. Hell no, they're not. And you know why? Because over the past decade, he hasn't gotten better one bit. He's gotten worse. He's gotten lazy. He's gotten complacent. He's gotten content with his place in the pecking order. And on the one hand, I don't begrudge him for that because if WWE is going to be stupid enough to pay him the high salary that they do for him to bring them absolutely nothing to the fucking table, I can't hate that game. But on the other hand, where is your professional pride? Where the hell is your personal pride saying that you want to be better and you want to do more? He's a typical type of asshat, typical type of millennial fuck that'll sit there and talk about, oh, you want this and I want that. And he does absolutely nothing to change his plot in life. Does absolutely nothing to make his situation better. You literally look at Dolph Ziggler and you can look at your NXT roster. You can look at the independent scene. There's literally dozens, if not hundreds of guys that you could shoehorn into Dolph Ziggler's spot and you would get the exact same out of for a fraction of the cost. If you're going to tell me people that you heavily invested in that were in big four pay-per-view main events in the past like Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt are expendable due to their high salary when a guy like Bray Wyatt especially at least certainly moved merchandise. Dolph Ziggler does none of that. He doesn't move your live attendance. He doesn't move your ratings. He doesn't move merch. And you're paying him an incredibly high salary. Why in the fuck would you do that? If we want to talk about business and get down to brass tacks of business, let's talk about business and say how from a business standpoint, this makes absolutely no damn sense. And this is the same type of asshole in the Dolph Ziggler that'll sit there and piss and moan and bitch and complain when somebody like a Rock or a Cena or a Goldberg has brought in because they're taking the spots from those that earned it. Well, they're not taking the spot from you, asshole, because you don't deserve it. And if anything, at this point in time, we're sitting here in August of 2021, the only one taking away spots from anybody is guess who? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler because it's him being wasted on our televisions every week, him being forced on there because the WWE, for some dumb dick reason, decided to make him the highest paid Horowitz jobber of all goddamn time. It's uh, somebody like him that eats up a spot that could actually go to a young talent and might actually have a chance of getting the fuck over. Might actually have the chance of moving some damn merch. Who might actually have a chance of moving ratings, moving live attendance, and all of that other shit. You want to sit there and piss him on and complain about the part-timers? How about the full-timers that are holding down the other town, the full-timers that are fucking everything up? We look so often at the WWE product, Raw, SmackDown, frankly, really doesn't matter. And you see a lack of intensity and you feel it and you know it and you can sense it. You feel a lack of urgency, spontaneity, and all of these good things that professional wrestling is supposed to have. And this asshole right here, Dolph Ziggler, is the personification, the epitome of it. Tell me the last time you remember Dolph Ziggler doing something great. I'll wait. Still waiting. Still waiting. Yup, that's worth $750,000 a fucking year. Give me a goddamn break. You're going to talk about budget cuts. Then the one budget cut you ought to be making is for... 
fuck Dolph Ziggler because you can pay five wrestlers what you're paying him, five superstars what you're paying him, and one of them, if not more, is bound to make a much bigger impact than that overrated piece of crap ever has or ever will again.